In this video, I want to talk about the Content Resolver. Let's head on over and have a look. It's in the Core Content folder. And the con let's start with the contentresolver.h file. We're going to take a look at the API. It's very simple. Most of the methods are concerned with interacting with data. And they're all, they all accept a URI. And depending upon the operation being requested, there's other arguments. So we have an insert, we have a delete, we have a query, and we have an update. The, the rest of the methods are all related to registering and unregistering for content URI changes. So when something changes, a consumer may want to be notified of that change. If you insert new rows in a table or delete something, um, those changes need to be communicated to the observers. So a typical example is when a view controller is visible, it may want to register for the content URI changes for the content that it's displaying. And then when it disappears, it may want to unregister. This method here allows a content provider to broadcast that a change has been made for a specific URI. So the next thing I want to look at here is the initializer. And there's a couple of, of arguments here that we're going to go over. I already mentioned in a previous video that a typical application can have multiple content providers. This application that the, that the demo application that this video series is based upon just has one, but you could imagine having multiple. So the initializer for the content resolver accepts a factory which is responsible for returning an instance of a content provider given a specific URI. The content authority base is part of the URI and the dictionary of registration is a mapping between a path and a content provider class. So let's have a deeper look at that. Let's have a look once again at the sample schemes, uh, uh, URI scheme that I came up with in an earlier video. This is a particular full URI that identifies some content. This first portion here, which is the, the scheme plus the bundle identifier, we're going to refer to as the content authority base. It identifies all content owned by this application. So as you can see, all three of these URIs have the same content authority base. Two of them have a path called data dragon, and one has a path called profile. This path portion here is what I'm going to use to identify which content provider is responsible for this URI. So in this case, the champion's URI is fulfilled. Any, any request made against this URI is fulfilled by the Data Dragon uh, content provider. The same here. And then any, any request made for this URI is fulfilled by the profile content provider. Again, this is all theoretical. I don't have a, co a profile content provider in this application. So looking again at the initializer, the content authority base is essentially the bundle identifier with a prefix of the content scheme. And then this registrations is a dictionary which maps the path to some class names which are content providers. So let's go look at where the content providers are, are referenced. If we look in this configuration P list, we have a content registrations dictionary here, and we only have one. So we're mapping anything with a data dragon path to the NIO data dragon content provider. This is just a class. So these registrations, you could have multiple here, each one with its own uh, prefix and class. And then that's what gets passed along to the content resolvers initializer right here. So what that does is anytime you make a request against a URI, whether it's a delete, insert, query, or an update, this URI gets parsed and it gets delegated to a content provider which has been registered to handle that URI. If we take a look at the .m file for the content resolver, let's have a look at the query method. Um, all these methods are pretty much the same. 
the job is go find the content provider for the URI passed in based on the registrations that were passed along on the initializer. If we don't find a content provider that handles that specific URI, we generate an error. Otherwise, we delegate the request to the content provider. So the content resolver is really just a delegator. It takes, it has an API for interacting with data. It finds a registered content provider that handles that specific URI, and then it hands the request off to that content provider. So if you look at the update, it's the same thing. Go find a content provider, delegate. The insert, same, and the delete is the same. So it's a very simple concept. The content resolver is responsible for registering content providers that fulfill requests against specific content in your application and the content resolver finds the appropriate content provider and hands off all requests to it. The last thing I want to look at here is how this is actually used in the application. So in order to do that, let's head on over to the NIO query task, which is in the application. And you'll notice that the run method here, um, anytime we make a query request in the application, we interact with the content resolver call its query method and this is the key thing here it passes a URI this URI is parsed a content provider is looked up that handles this URI request and then that request is handed off to that content provider but all interaction with content occurs through the content resolver